We're going to continue this section by referring or talking about transaction processing systems. Now, it's important to realize that many organizations have various TPS systems in place. Now, these typically aid them with the capture and process of detailed data that will help them to maintain their records, which relates to the business operations, so the fundamental aspects of that particular business. Systems typically include order processing, inventory control, payroll, accounts payable, receivable, general ledger, etc. Now we also need to realize that the inputs to these systems are basically in the form of any business transaction. For example, a customer that places an order, that transaction should be entered into the system, inventory control will be affected, paying payments will be affected, um, shipping and delivery will be affected, so all of these systems need to take note of that. Employees purchasing supplies, customer payments, and an employee signing in and out at work, okay, so it's your payroll type system environment. Now when we talk about TPS, it's important to realize that there's various processing activities that will take place. And we're going to look at each one of these in a little more detail in one of the future slides. So the t activities actually include data collection, editing, correction, manipulation, storage and document production. The result is that all the organization's records are updated continuously and will reflect the status of operation at the time of which the last transaction was processed. Now, TPS systems serve as the foundation for various other systems. And if you think back about our first topic where we talked about organizations and the various systems, we find that on that pyramid model, that TPS sits at the bottom of that model. So TPS typically provides information to our decision support systems, management information systems, and then ultimately also as part of our specialized system and our executive type systems. So TPS should support the routine operations within the business. It should also provide value to customers. Reason being, as our customers interact with our company, they would like to keep track of all the interactions, so they would like to see a history of the interactions and all the information that they contributed to the company. The last thing that we need to realize about TPS is that all the data that we collect will become outputs and then these will become inputs to other essential IS systems. As I've mentioned, MIS, Management Information Systems, Decision Support Systems and Special Purpose Systems. Now let's go and look at some contributing factors that relate to each of these systems. Now if we look at this image, initially it seems a bit confusing but it's actually quite easy to understand. Let's do them one by one. Information versus data. TPS systems will use less information but they will generate more data. If we go upwards to the more specialized systems, we would find that special information systems and knowledge management systems would have more information but less data. Let's look at the routine operations that we typically experience. TPS will have more routine operations whereas with the sophisticated systems there's less operations. Decision support. Less decisions will be taken at TPS because it's mo mainly for data capturing and gathering whereas with the more specialized systems we're going to find more decisions. Inputs versus outputs. We're going to have a lot more inputs and outputs versus if we look at the more specialized systems, we're mainly going to focus on our inputs and not worry about too many. Sorry, we're mainly going to focus on our outputs and not worry too much about our inputs. Sophistication. At the bottom part of the pyramid, TPS systems are less sophisticated, whereas our more complex and specialized systems will require a lot more sophistication. Now when we talk about TPS systems, it's important to realize what the methods and objectives of these systems are. And they talk about two general definitions of 
um, techniques that we need to take note of. The first one is batch processing. Now batch processing is a form of transaction processing where all the transactions are accumulated over a period of time and then once we have a certain collection we're going to um, submit it as a batch. It's important to realize that there might be a delay between the event and the actual processing. On the other side we have OLTP or online transaction processing which is what we nowadays face. Now this is a form of data processing where each transaction is processed immediately without any delay. So once a transaction has been submitted immediately that information will reflect throughout the whole system. Now let's look at this again. If we look at the top one an example of batch processing might be something like bank checks where companies would accumulate a number of checks and then once they have the checks at the end of the week they would go and deposit all of them in a bank account. Alternatively an online transaction processing system could be um, a system that gathers a lot of information, people, people buy products and then at the end of the week the system generates the necessary outputs or actually when it's required they can go ahead and generate output. Now TPS systems aim to accomplish a specific number of goals. For example, first one they need to process the data generated by and about transactions. They need to ensure that there is a high degree of accuracy and integrity. Try to avoid fraudulent transactions that are being processed in companies. Produce timely, and sorry, produce timely user responses and reports. Increase labor efficiency. Improve customer service. Help to build and maintain customer loyalty. And then help the company to achieve a competitive advantage. Let's look at the transaction processing activities. Now there's a number of activities that will take place. Now TPS we mentioned captures and processes data of fundamental business processes. Now the transaction processing cycle will determine the difference between good and bad data. So it's going to look at the process of data collection, data editing, correction, manipulation, storage and document production. So we're going to start off by working with our original data. Now this data can be accepted or used from various sources. The original data will then be sent through to data collection. Data collection will proceed to data editing. At this stage data will be either be classified as bad data or good data. If it's bad data it should go for data correction. If it's considered to be good it continues onwards to data processing. Data processing proceeds to data storage. Data correction alternatively proceed back to original data, so the process will be repeated. And then after data storage, we're going to have document production and TPS report generation. So this is a nice schematic of all the transaction processing cycle activities. Now let's look at each one of these in more detail. With data collection, we're going to look at the capturing and gathering of all the necessary data in order to process our transactions within our company. So it begins with transactions and the results um, will be in the form of data, which serves as the input to the TPS system. Now data collection can be either manual or automated. Manual data collection would be where once data has been generated, a user would go once in a while, sit down and collect or enter the data into the system. Automated data capturing would mean that as soon as customers buy products, the inventory list might automatically be reduced by the number of products sold. Or if we think about newer type systems where we use RFID tags, as, new as, as soon as new products 
or are brought to our warehouses, our inventory can automatically be updated without any user interaction. Now, data that is captured at its source and that is recorded accurately, meaning timely and without a lot of effort, into the computer is also known as source data automation. So as soon as data becomes available and is recorded, it is known as source data automation. Now let's continue to look at data editing and then what happens to bad data. Data editing is all the processes that will assist us in checking that our data is complete and valid. For example, if you enter information, it's going to look at, let's say for argument's sake, you try to capture customer details and you ask for date of birth. If the system determines that a customer is two years old, it's probably not valid because, let's say for argument's sake, you can only conduct business once you're 21 years or older. So in that case, the system can detect that there's an issue with the data and it can send it for data correction. Now, if you think back to the first topic that we talked about, the system components, we talked about input processing output and then feedback. So data editing would be in the processing component of our systems components. And as soon as the issue is detected, it's going to send it for um, validation. It's going to send feedback. And feedback is generally in the form of error messages that will inform a person that something went wrong, that they either need to re-enter information or that the transaction cannot be executed. So let's say for argument's sake, we did detect that there is bad data. So now it goes to data correction. And data correction is the process where we're going to retype or scan the information. So we go back to our original data, we recapture that data, and it goes through the whole cycle again. If the data has been considered to be good, it goes onwards to data processing. Now data processing, or also sometimes referred to as data manipulation, is the process of performing calculations and other data transformations that relate to business transactions. For example, determining VAT rates, determining your profit margins, all those kind of things. Now these can include classifying data, sorting data into categories, performing various calculations, summarizing your results, and storing your data in your organization databases for further processing. So once you've processed and saved your data, it actually goes to data storage. Now data storage is where we're going to look at our databases and we're going to process and update one or more databases with the new transactions that we've just generated. At this stage, data can be further manipulated and processed, and we can actually go and include additional queries. So you might find that one database would communicate with various other databases. And let's say if we think in terms of inventory management, um, it might enable or trigger other actions that should take place. Now, once we've saved our data, the last few steps that we need to do is to look at document production and TPS report generation. Now document production is where we're going to generate output reports, documents and some general reports that we might need for other systems and these can be either in hard copy format or it can be displayed on screen. Now in one of the future lessons we're going to look at different types of documents and with these types of documents, we will see that it can be system dependent and it can even be time dependent. But for now, just know that whenever documents are presented or created, typically it comes in two formats, printed copies or displayed copies.